Breaking tonight, the White House offers a statement on the president's explosive allegations that seem to catch everyone, including the intelligence community and the president's inner circle, off guard. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway is standing by live to answer my questions about those shocking allegations from the President and the investigation into those claims. But first, let's get caught up. After staying quiet all day yesterday, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer released a series of tweets today in response to President Trump's tweets from yesterday morning, accusing President Obama of wiretapping him and his campaign in 2016. Spicer said in part, quote, President Trump is requesting that as part of their investigation into Russian activity, the Congressional Intelligence Committees exercise their oversight authority to determine whether executive branch investigative powers were abused in 2016. Spicer also said the White House and President won't comment again on this until the investigation happens. Meantime, another bombshell report out tonight that FBI Director James Comey is now front and center in all of this. Leland Bittert is standing by at the White House now with more. Leland? Oh, good evening, Judge. And this really sets up a potential Monday showdown between the FBI Director and the president, and of course the FBI director serves at the pleasure of the president. Over the weekend, James Comey reportedly went to the Justice Department and said he wanted to issue a statement vehemently denying Mr. Trump's accusation, saying he felt as though the president had accused the FBI of committing a crime, which it did not commit. Now, Fox News cannot independently corroborate that report that the New York Times had a couple of hours ago. We can tell you that law enforcement officials tell us that the most senior members of federal law enforcement were, quote, caught completely off guard by the president's tweets on Saturday morning, adding those officials had no idea what the president was talking about. The White House also not commenting, not offering any evidence in terms of support for what the president had to say on Saturday morning, nor have they offered any clarifications to the accusations. They have essentially pass the baton on to Congress. The House intelligence community is now going to pick up this as part of their investigation into the Russian involvement in the U.S. election. Still, though, a lot of unanswered questions, including whether Mr. Trump's senior staff that was caught completely off guard themselves, were told by these Saturday morning tweets, believes what the president had to say is true. Take a listen to the deputy White House press secretary this morning. The president of the United States is accusing the former president of wiretapping him. I think that this is, again, something that if this happened, Martha, if this if, would if if <laughs> I, I agree. Why is the president saying it did happen? Look, I think he is going off of information that he's seen that has led him to believe uh, that this is a very real potential. Now, the president's information for the Saturday morning tweets appears to have come from a Breitbart article that was published late Thursday night, early Friday morning. That article was based off of a number of other reports, all using unnamed sources regarding the possibility of a warrant being issued by the Federal National Security Court, Federal Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, as it relates to possible involvement by Trump associates with Russian foreign agents. Fox News can't corroborate those reports independently either. President Obama has vehemently denied that anyone inside the White House or he personally ordered surveillance on Mr. Trump or his campaign. Democrats seem to think what is now being called Tower Gate is going to be a win-win for him. The president's in trouble if he falsely spread this kind of misinformation that is so wrong, it's, it's beneath the dignity of the presidency. On the other hand, if it's true, it's even worse for the president, because that means that a federal judge independently elected has found probable cause that the president or people on his staff have had probable cause to have broken the law or to have interacted with a foreign agent. Now, that's serious stuff. So either way, the president makes it worse with these tweets. 
Now, this is not the first time the president and the White House have demanded an investigation into something that started with the president's tweets. You might remember, Judge, a little more than a month ago, the president had those tweets about three million illegal people voting in the election. They then demanded a large investigation into that. So far, we haven't heard anything back on that. And now we wait for the sun to come up and the potential showdown between the FBI director and his president. Leland, thank you very much. And meantime tonight, former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, the man who held that job at the time of this wiretapping, as alleged by President Trump, spoke about the accusation today on NBC's Meet the Press. I was just going to say, if the FBI, for instance, had a FISA court order of some sort for a surveillance, would that be information you would know or not know? Yes. You would be told this. I would know that. If there was a FISA court order yes. on something like this. Um, something like this, absolutely. And at this point, you can't confirm or deny whether that exists? I can deny it. There is no FISA court order? Not, not to my knowledge. Of anything at Trump Tower? No. And joining me now from Washington in a primetime justice exclusive, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Good evening, Kellyanne. Does President Trump already know the answer to the question as to whether or not he was wiretapped? He may. As Senator Mark Warner of Virginia said on a different show today, Janine, the president receives different intelligence than everyone else. But the real point here is what the president has said and what Sean Spicer and Sarah Sanders, my colleague, said earlier today which is there are a couple things going on here. One is uh, we know there were politically motivated stories and investigations all through uh, the campaign season. And those come from credible news sources. And the president wants to get to the bottom of that. I mean, what is everybody afraid of? They want to investigate everything, even the attenuated stuff. And yet they're afraid of, of connecting here what the president has asked for, which is basically if you're going to investigate, continue to rush to get Russia, 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 why not add to that an investigation of these allegations. But, and, and Janine, are we saying that there aren't leaks? I mean, the real issue here is one that House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes raised again today, which is leaks, leaks, leaks. These bureaucratic leaks are hurting all of us. These are national security intelligence leaks uh, from people held over from another administration. And it has to stop. This is serious stuff. But, but, but Kellyanne, if indeed the president's accusation is based upon open source reporting, um, wouldn't he, and, and James Clapper, who would definitely know, because if there were a FISA warrant, DNI, FBI, and DOJ would know, he is saying that there wasn't. If the president knows this, he is in a position to, to declassify any warrant or wiretap order were one to exist. Why doesn't he just do that and prove it? Is he shifting the burden of proof to the Democrats? No, he's not. But two things on that. The Democrats and some of their allies in other industries love to shout Russia, Russia. Imagine if every time they shouted Russia, they would shout leaks instead. And that's something that we actually know is happening and know that there is uh, corroborating evidence. And if we got to the bottom of that, then we all may be safer. Secondly, Mr. Clapper did not, uh, he left over, he did not d discount the possibility that this may have come from somewhere else in the administration that's not under his purview. He said very clearly to Chuck Todd that he's talking about the agencies that are under his purview, that he would have known that and he can Fine, deny so. that. That's a very, listen, it's a very big administration. It's a big government but filled with people. Kellyanne, we're both lawyers. He's saying it could be Title III, and if it's Title III, that it is a, that it would be a local or a state prosecutor right. in a criminal case. He's talking about federal uh, uh, foreign intelligence. So it's even worse if it's a, if it's a federal uh, well, but, criminal case. But my case. only point is, Janine, I'm not crediting it one way or the other. My only point is that Mr. Clapper, in, in issuing a denial about a specific question that Chuck Todd asked him, also later in the interview, left open the possibility that it could come from somewhere else. It's the same thing that happened yesterday when President Obama's spokesman said uh, the cardinal rule was that President Obama and the White House, White House officials never interfered in a Department of Justice investigation. Fine. But he, he did leave over the po leap over the possibility that other pieces of the administration may be the source okay. of this, may be leakers. All right, let me ask you this then. Is it appropriate for a president to accuse another president based on open source reporting or with an open-ended question? And I guess even more important, if the head of the FBI 
is saying and pushing back and asking DOJ to push back on this. Are we now uh, facing a constitutional crisis before the first hundred days are over? I wouldn't say that. Um, if Mr. Comey has something he'd like to say, I'm sure we're all willing to hear it. All I saw was a published news report. I didn't see a statement from him. Um, and so I don't know what Mr. Comey knows, but we're, we're all being he, he would know. He would know either way, because if it were a Title III wiretap, he would know it, because that's his criminal division. Uh, or if it were an FBI, uh, the, the counterintelligence, uh, counterterrorism, he would know that, too, under FISA. He right. knows. And if he's pushing back, we've got a real problem between the head of the FBI and the president, the executive branch. Well, and if he knows, of course, he can issue a statement. Um, but and we know he's not shy. Uh, so the other thing, the other the other question you asked, I just want to make the point too that mm -hmm. we have a double standard here on anonymous sources. You yeah. know, the media are so quick to rely upon them for everything, including these leaks, any type of attenuated Russia connection. Anonymous sources, when it's negative and derogatory toward this president, if it's positive and exonerating, they don't want to hear about it. Somehow, we need to have. Uh, everything laid out, all types of evidence presented. The president made very clear, as did Sean Spicer, our press secretary, that we like this to be included in the the president would like it to be included in the investigation, and that we'll have no further comment until that oversight is uh, is completed. Uh, the uh, other point uh, I like to make is, you yes. know, everybody loves to run around and say, Janine, that Judge Janine, that. Oh, you know, the president had this wonderful speech on Tuesday night. He was heralded from all political corners. It was very unifying. People felt great. You saw the poll numbers mm -hmm. afterwards. They were great. And, and yet everybody says, and look at this. Now we can't talk about it anymore. Really? Why not? Uh, look at the Fox News polls and every other network's polls. What do those say are important to Americans? What we're discussing now, what everybody's obsessed with uh, this whole week, or what the president talked about, that no. there is that action yep. is a necessity, not a choice. We will have health care reform. Well, we will have a new we will have new domestic policies coming out this week. Perhaps thank you. we will, in fact, uh, get get a handle on this opiate abuse that the president uh, laid out yep. so beautifully go. the other night. Kelly he's got a lot go. to do and he's thank going to you. do it. Thanks, thank Kelly Ann, for being with us and Thanks. here with reaction, former. So this is historically black colleges and universities, executive order, very important to all of us. This group has been fantastic, many of which we were with yesterday, and, right. and really developed something right. very special. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, also, for Mike, for being here. This is a very important moment, and a moment that means a great deal to me. This month has been a wonderful opportunity to celebrate African-American history and to begin working together to create a better future for African Americans and universities and colleges and everything that is African American. Today, we're taking action to help make that future happen and that future better. Historically, black colleges and universities are incredibly important institutions woven into the fabric of our history, just about like no other. Church is very important. Yeah. Right? Yes. Colleges yes. and universities. Come here. My, my defender. He's on the <laughs> Education has the power to uplift. It has the power to transform. And perhaps most important, education has the power to create greater equality and justice in our lives. That's why today I'm thrilled to be signing an executive order to recognize the importance of historically black college and universities. Very important. They have played such an important role in achieving progress for African Americans and in our nation's march for justice. HBCUs have been really pillars of the African American community for more than 150 years. Amazing job. And a grand and enduring symbol of America at its absolute best. And I congratulate you all to say that. With this executive order, we will make HBCUs a priority in the White House, an absolute priority. All right. Yes. 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 A lot of people are be angry that they're not a priority, but that's okay. <laughs> and we will pledge our support to you, your mission, and our shared mission of bringing education and opportunity to all of our people. And so I just want to congratulate these are very, very special people. 
surrounding me. You've done an amazing job. It's not easy. Nothing's easy. But you've done an amazing job, and I just want to congratulate you all, and I want to thank you on behalf of our country. And I'm going to sign this. Thank you. Thank you. This is really fantastic. Who's your guest?